Hi, welcome to Marketers I Love. I am Rachel Claver and I collect all the marketers I love and make them have time with me so I can benefit and you can benefit from their wisdom and clarity. And I'm really excited to talk to Tash McGill today because she is an awesomeness person when it comes to helping people feel aligned. Organizations and businesses get all their values and align them together so they make sure they're doing the right thing and growing the right way. In fact, you call it transformation through alignment. Is that right, Tash? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to explain a little bit about what that means and then we'll get like into what values-based outcomes are? Sure. Uh, I, the, f the first place that I always start is by um, explaining this one sentence, which is that most people think they need change, um, but what they really want is alignment. And so whether you are um, an individual, a self-employed owner operator, or you are part of a bigger business and organization, there's almost always something that you think you need to change in order to achieve the goal that you have or the outcome that you want. Um, but my primary starting point where I've seen the most success for my clients, um, no matter how big or small they are, is actually coming back to what is it in their day-to-day -day operations, what is it in their marketing focus and their activity that's currently out of alignment that needs to be back in alignment so that they were, can head towards those outcomes more effectively. I really love that because a lot of what we do is talk about how we want you to find the client, we help you find the clients that are the right clients for you and one of the big discussions my clients have they really struggle with this is sometimes what they think is their right clients which sometimes is their current clients are not the best ones that fit in with their values mm -hmm. don't fit in with their goals and don't fit in with actually what they sell yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, and especially for a lot of the work that I do is with businesses who are in that scale-up phase. Mm. So they've been a startup, they've been, they've been small, they've started with everybody doing a little bit of everything, and then they've started to grow. And as they've started to grow, they've started to need to adopt some slightly bigger business operating practices. You know, they've started to think about things like marketing objectives and budgets mm. and investment and who needs to be doing what. And one of the things that really quickly falls out of alignment with that is that, is that focus on very often the clients that come to you in the first early years are the clients who do the hard scrap with you, mm. uh, but they're not necessarily the clients that are, are that best fit for your business as you move forward. Because the first two to three years of your business, I mean, I would say that this is an ongoing practice, um, but especially the first two to three years of your business, you're in a refining mode of actually, you know, in the beginning, you'll do a little bit of whatever you need to do to bring, to bring in the revenue and to keep it all going. Um, but actually, as time goes on, you, you tend to become a little bit more focused. Um, and that's especially true in the case of if you have a product that you're selling. Yeah, it's quite funny. I was watching someone who's just started their business up recently and I saw their website and I was like, I did that on my website. And I see it a lot in startup businesses when they're starting where they're kind of like, they use their website as their brands, their brainstorming dumping ground of going, oh yeah, actually this is kind of what I'm going to say about this. And they kind of write it into their website and then hope it's going to magically happen. And then as you grow, you end up creating this huge big messaging around stuff that maybe isn't actually who you are and what works and Mm -hmm. It does need to mm -hmm. be simplified, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you know, I mean, when you get into sort of the nitty gritty brass tacks, um, once, you know, once, once you've aligned your values and you understand the outcomes that you're clearly going um, towards, then one of the first things that I often do is jump into the messaging uh, and look at the website and be, so when's the last time that you sold this product or when's the last time yeah. that you sold this service? When's the last time that you actually did this? Okay, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. You know? We, we pivoted about two years ago and one of the things, we had like a 65 page website and wow. people were staying on our website for a long time. Like we had a really low bounce rate and people were staying on between eight to 10 minutes. They loved being on the website. Didn't get any inquiries. Um, and we went to a three page website that was really clear on what we do. Um, and overnight, just inquiries started coming in. And, but also we started getting the right clients. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is like, I mean, I've gone through this process too. I think lots of business owners, whether we're marketers or not, it's really important to really clearly define what your values are and then make sure everything you say is relating to those values. Uh, clarity is kind. Yeah. Clarity is kind. It's helping, it's helping you to not put you and your team through. Mm. Um, and obviously, I mean, you know, in a, in, a, in a product sales capacity, it's perhaps not quite as important, but certainly if you're in a services type business, um, being clear and straightforward and helping us and helping identify 
whether or not you are wasting the time of your team or whether or not you're wasting the time of that potential client if they're not a good fit is so helpful just and oh, and, and and positive for your brand reputation i think if you're able to say hey you know what? i'm not the right person to help you but perhaps this business is yeah we say a lot know a lot more personally we say a lot, a lot more to people that approach us and we say yes to them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we're just going these are the best people for us and, and it takes confidence i think i think there is that thing around aligning your values when you really know what your values are you start actually being confident to go actually we could do that for you, but we're not the best people for that. And we just stick to the things we do really, really well. Mm -hmm. It feels scary. Well, because every, every step you take outside of what's aligned to your values is mm. actually, it's actually pushing you out of alignment. It's like going to, um, it's like going to an osteopath or going to like a physical therapist and doing all of the work to, you know, get your, your shoulder injury mm. healed or your posture right. And then continuing to engage in the same you know, bad behaviors or poor posture that led to the injury in the first place. It just doesn't really make sense, right? But no, it's, it's, hard. It's, it's, hard. it's hard and it's painful and it, and, and it, is, it, can, be, it can be hard and painful. Mm -hmm. it, it's the stretch and grow, right? Where either, where either it feels exhausting to say, no, we're only going to focus on this business and therefore we mm -hmm. may have to work a little bit harder or it can feel very fearful. If we only focus on these specific things, you know, how are we going to grow? How are we going to achieve the goals? How we, but, but sometimes the point is not how quickly you achieve the goals or the outcomes. Sometimes it's what kind of condition are you in when you get there? How many of your team are you able to take um, with you? A, a lot of the work, a lot of the reason why I think that values-based outcomes and alignment around those things is really important is that that is actually the key to unlocking sustainability in your business. And we have a lot of people, I think, who, you know, uh, throw the word entrepreneur around without actually really understanding what that means. I'm not a and fan of that word. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. I'm a business owner, you know, like I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. the, num the number of people who come to me, has, who, who will come to me saying, and people that I dearly, I dearly appreciate, I really enjoy, mm. you know, I really enjoy the clients that I work with, but they'll come to me and say, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got this business, you know, we've been running for eight years now. And I'm like, you need to stop. It, you're a business owner. You're yeah. not an entrepreneur. So, and, and the thing that needs to change um, in terms of the way that we use that word entrepreneur is that a lot of the time, the hidden assumptions, right? The unspoken expectations, the things that lead us into trouble is that when we think entrepreneur, we are thinking about um, cracking the million dollar secret code. We're thinking yes. about, you know, we're thinking about how we're, gonna, how we're going to magically unlock the secret source mm -hmm. that sees us into catapulting success. But the reality is for most of us to be happy and healthy and thriving and to have alignment, not just in our business world um, and our vocation, but also in our family, yeah. most of actually what we need as, as business owners is to have sustainability. Right. How do I... yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, that's, that's why I focus on this values based outcome. Thing. I love it. If you know what you're heading towards, then. Actually, then... Um, it reminded me, I, I got asked to speak at a conference years ago um, about helping people support with the company that had gone through a values based thing where they were getting the whole team to, to adopt it. And one of the values they were using for this team, which was a big corporate group was the spirit of entrepreneurship which basically they translated as you work whenever you can, you work all hours of the day and night, any ideas that you come up with are our ideas. And I was like, I, I never got asked back again because I, so, I went so rogue with it. So I was like, you can't have that as the spirit of, of the business because everyone will, who's a true entrepreneur will leave because you're sparking that for them. And also you're not respecting boundaries of home and family life. Like how is that sustainable? Uh, I I would say the same thing about the mythology of work life balance in yes. uh, work life balance, particularly as 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 it is applied to um, working mums. Yeah, right? it's very like, hard. We'll we'll sell we'll sell you flexibility. We will sell you um, you know a, a work from home. We'll figure mm. out your schedule. And really, what that means is that there are um, hundreds and thousands of women working at one and two o'clock in the morning in between feeds or dropping their kids on and off from school, conducting conference calls in cars, mm -hmm. you know, and, and working themselves to stress points that they mm. shouldn't be, right? Because it's that same, it, it is that same mythology. It is hilarious. Um, 
to me. The other thing, the other thing I love to do when people start talking about that word entrepreneur, and there are some incredible entrepreneurs. In, oh, I in, love like it's, it's all, yeah, I'm just all not one. Well, and also, you know, how do we how do we foster healthy entrepreneurship? Mm. Because if you you know if you ask if you ask people who are using that word, um, you know, well, who do, who do you look up to? Who do you aspire to um, in terms of entrepreneurship? Um, you know, that some of the people that they name have just got chaotic. One aspect of life might be great, but other things are chaotic. And so when you then say, well, what is it about that person that you want to emulate or that you mm. would want to adopt? You know, it just it, pretty quickly, it, it falls apart. So healthy yeah. entrepreneurs are all about it. <laughs> oh, no, I love it because I, you know, like I have, I have an issue with the word. I feel like it encourages behavior that's not sustainable. Like I remember having this guy who said he was an entrepreneur and he did a post about how he was, he fell asleep exhausted on the stage at three o'clock in the morning because he hadn't stopped for a week. And I was like, that's not healthy. Like, mm-hmm. why are you, why is everyone glorifying this? This is not, this is not life. Um, and I feel, I feel there's this tremendous pull as business owners where we're going, we need to be doing everything. So my big thing in marketing is you've got to show up. Like you've got to be out there. Your face has got to be out there. You've got to show it. But so many of them are still so stuck with, their values around, I can't even cope with the juggle of my every day. I don't even know mm-hmm. how to go to the next step of marketing because it's it's just the block is too much because their values, their actual values are so not aligned with their business values. 100%. Um, and, and the other piece is that oftentimes they'll have, a, they'll have a value which is aspirational, but they have no idea what that actually looks like. I like that. So you're saying that they're saying they have this value that they know they want to attain or they want to be living by, but they don't know how to get there. They don't know what it looks like. Kind of like when I watch videos of people doing like really amazing functional fitness and I go, I'll do that at the gym. And then I start doing it going, no, not quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. (laughs) Well, um, the body doesn't bend that way. (laughs) Um, the other one is the other, the other thing that happens really simply is that people have, um, they adopt values that they think they should. Um, yes. that they should have, right? I've definitely had that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and often, so whenever I start working with a client, the first place that I start is actually walking through an articulation exercise on mm. what do your values look like? And, it, and we usually go through it um, a couple of times. We use the, um, I use the UK Design Council double diamond methodology um, of expanding and then refining and then developing and then perfecting um, the expression so that um, so that they can get to a point of being able to say um, instead of being able to say I value diversity for example yeah. which is a buzzword right so yeah, anytime yeah. your value is a buzzword it's going to mean 13 different things to everybody yeah. in your business and to your clients yeah. so helping them get to a point of being able to say really specifically I value having a diverse range of perspectives in my executive team which looks like regularly inviting people into difficult conversations that will eventually help me be a better leader. Now that's a long sentence, but it is a very really defined. Um, I had that with, um, I worked for a business and one of their values was family, but they were a pretty dysfunctional family. So their idea of family was not me hanging out with my family. It was me dropping my family to be with the work family. Mm-hmm. and so and and so i i've also you know when i talk to clients often they say family okay cool what does that look like to you what does conflict look like in your family do you have direct conversations um do you like telling people what to do and they just do it or you know how does that work because i agree with you quite often we're throwing these words around like love and family um mm-hmm. diversity um what would be some other keywords agile oh ag- ag- nobody really knows what that means anymore no, i mean no, no, i no. I come from a digital agency background and the ways that I see people absolutely butcher yeah. the application of, of, of agile methodology, agile is an idea, agile is a concept, agile the word, just no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Lean. Like there's so um, many different words, right? That people just toss around and go, this is our value, but there's no heart based in it. Uh, authenticity and honesty is, yeah. often, is often used as a cover for I can say whatever I want and I can drop a bomb in this meeting because honesty is one of our values, but I don't have to take any responsibility for solving the problem. I quite like that one, man. You're, you'd be tough. Uh, I, look, the thing is, is that <laughs> um, one of the things that, that, I, um, that I really believe and have seen and, and with my clients, I'm like, ultimately, if you're a business owner, 
it's a little bit different if you're in a larger team, but it's particularly if you're a business owner, yeah. um, your business values, your vocational values are going to be pretty well aligned with your personal values as a person. I think that's very so, true. Yeah. So it is actually about helping get, helping you get to a place where you can um, offer a healthy expression of what your values are and how you then lead your business, run your business, develop your team through those values. And it actually becomes, you know, again, it goes back to clarity. It helps clarify things really simply. And nobody should ever have to apologize for who they are. Um, so a lot of the time it can feel really freeing when my clients are working with me because they get language around things that they haven't necessarily had a way of expressing before, which is really cool. Because I think that team that, I know I look back on us because we went from like one to six to 14 to six and now we're two with part, a part-timer and, 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 a, and a group of contractors. Um, and I know that one of the reasons that that growth happened was I was very loose with my values. Like I wasn't, I didn't spend time really sitting and going, this is what my values are. And so I would just, and I, and my, the way I led was actually the way I parent where I go, here's a little bit of information. Now go forth and work it out yourself. Like that's mm -hmm. how I parent. So right. That's how I led. And that didn't work great because what happens is then everyone is working the business and their own values. And that doesn't mean their values are wrong. They were just different to mine. But if I said that they were different and they were unaligned, then of course it feels like if you're, if you're saying to someone, Hey, your values aren't the same as mine, it can feel very confronting. And it created yes. issues, yes. so many issues. I had to really learn. I learned a lot about me as a person, as a, as a team leader, as a verse to me as a person, as a person who helps our clients, that the two different, very skill, very different skill sets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult as a business owner to get that balance right between the two. Well, and again, that's where the values alignment piece can help yeah. because once you're able to articulate what those which values, I can do now, <laughs> which yeah. is fantastic. Once you're able to articulate what those values look like when they're being expressed yeah. healthily, then you can make decisions about what kind of personal development and, and professional development you want to engage in as a leader mm. in order to become a better leader in your business, a better leader in your team. Yeah. Um, and and this, is work that, this is work that I have brought into almost every professional relationship that I've mm. had over the last 15 years, regardless of whether I've been you know, working for, for another agency or for myself mm. or, or what have you, helping people figure out what is the specific way that I want to improve, that I want to grow, is is always part of helping people get on the journey to achieving the outcomes, even if the outcomes are something really hard and measurable, like, you know, the, the way that a marketing campaign performs for digital media, like it, yeah. it's all connected because how you engage with people on the path to delivering those outcomes is all coming out of who you actually are. So, so I'm just, it's quite interesting you say that. So like when you look at, I think that's one of the things people find really hard when we talk about values is a lot of people kind of know they've got to do it, which is why they kind of tick the box and write down some values and go, this is our values. And then they never look at them again. No, my favorite is when they say, here's our values. They're on the wall and there's 15 and I go, cool. What are they? And they go, oh, I just need to go and read them. Like values are in here, like they're deep in here. Mm -hmm. um, and, but do you think that the biggest challenge is First, we identify them and work out exactly what it is, but then translating that, which essentially is in some ways quite an abstract thought into something that's, that's tangible like a marketing campaign, or do you feel that, that values are tangible if they're the right values? I think that values are tangible when they're mm. the right values because they're always, you're always able to think about an example of what it looks like when that value is being expressed. Yes. When it's in alignment, and you're also yep. always able to think about this is what it looks like when it's not in alignment. Mm. So for example, um, one of my values is, um, and this is a really important one in business. One of my, one of my values is um, around generosity. Um, I value having more than enough resource, yes. time and money to be able to give freely and invest when I need to and where I need to. Because of that, I charge what I'm worth in yes. my business. And I don't have a problem charging what I'm worth or having conversations about money because that money, that exchange is both about how I am valued and my work is valued, but it's also about what it facilitates me to be able to do in my business and in my community. Yeah. And I so, love that. I love that. Because one of ours <coughs> is add value. And um, I've just, one of our clients who we finished working with, 
um, I noticed it gone quiet. I jumped in and said, what's going on? There's stuff going on. And I went, look, I'll just jump in and do this stuff because I want to make sure that we see that success. I can do that today and do that because like you, we're charging what we're worth. Mm-hmm. So if I have the, I, I am able to be generous. Yeah. If I need to be. Yeah. Right. And it's important. It also to- kicked to curb people who take that for granted. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the key there, right, is that the, 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 the value is, is generosity. It's generosity yes, that's it driving is. everything. Yeah. Right? And so, um, so, for example, when I start to apply that out to my pricing model, um, I, I price for volume. I'm not, I'm yeah. not interested in, in, in pricing per hour, per whatever. I'm more interested in what is the value of this outcome? Okay. If we agree that this is the value of the outcome, I'm going to do what's ever, whatever is required within reason to achieve that outcome because yeah. we've agreed this is what it's worth. Okay, done. So maybe some months I'm working 12 hours, maybe some months I'm working 32, but the reality is the value is there because we've yeah. agreed this is the mutual value and that enables me to be generous with my time, my yeah. investment, and I'm not sitting there going, Oh well, I need to quit working on this outcome because I've I've reached my budget of allotted hours, and that that's kind of the old school agency model, you know. Yeah, if we um, ours as an agency, we don't do. We've got a couple of clients that are on monthly, but none of it's retainer, but it's doing work. Mm-hmm. For everyone else, it's that project where we go, we're going to deliver these outcomes. Yes, um, yeah. and it doesn't take. So, so some people, it doesn't take very long to do it, and some people it takes a really long time to do it, but has liberated me from feeling like I'm having to go, I can't do this bit because it's going to cost them more. I know they can't afford it or vice versa. Oops, a daisy that costs, that didn't cost as much to us as I thought it would in terms of time. I feel guilty. So it's liberated me from that by going, that's the value. Yes. Yes. It's a powerful tool. Absolutely. It really is. And then it, and then it goes even further because you know, just as you said about the um, the number of uh, values that you'll see on a values poster on a wall. Yes. Um, there's, there's two things with that. You know, one, primarily, they're usually decided by another person or another group of people. Sometimes I've dealt with, um, I've dealt with businesses, um, larger businesses who have actually had um, agencies develop those values for them. Oh, good. And, <laughs> and and you know and 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 there's good work in that. I'm not I'm not yeah. discounting it, right? You know, good good consultancies that can that can work with a company to help identify those values. But then there's usually too many, and they're yeah. usually abstract in how they actually apply to the business. One of the things that's important about using um, about developing your values is that you can then use that as a filter to say, what are our most important outcomes right now? Mm. what are the things that we need to focus on in order to be most in alignment with our values? And that's going to help you immediately focus down on who your priority audiences need to be for the next six, Mm. 12, 18 months, who your priority services and products need to be. If there's a place geographically that you need to be focusing more of your marketing budget, Mm. Um, all of those things, because they're being defined by making sure that your values are in alignment. So the ones that are furthest out, let's bring them right back in. Yeah. What activity needs to happen in the business in order for us to be thriving? Um, and, so, and so that's how practically they can be used to really help you then drill down into tactical stuff to say, hey, you know what? Yes, we have been spending $50,000 a year trying to tap into this particular market. But you know what? Things are actually sustainable and healthy in that market and with that product right now. So let's, mm-hmm. let's dial back and actually, instead of looking at growth strategies, let's look at sustainability strategies there. And let's focus on trying to bring this product that's been dawdling along in the market or this mm-hmm. service or this what have you. Let's actually spend some time, you know, investing and focusing on that. And then even, even with non kind of financial investment, right? So, we, you know, when, you come, when it comes to marketing. Um, it's time and it's, and it's energy. So yeah. if, you know, if one of the, um, a client that I, that I'm working with at the moment, one of their values is that they, they give away more resource than what they charge for. Right. So they have a core That's curriculum, awesome. they have a core curriculum product, but one of their values is we want to be giving people stuff they can use frequently and consistently. However, They'd got so busy developing the, the core product and keeping the core product up to date that that investment of time into their podcast, their downloadable resources, all of the things that they, when they do them, they do them so extraordinarily well. 
um, that had just kind of fallen off the radar. So when I started working with them, that was a really easy fix to be able to say, hey, you know what? Giving stuff, giving people stuff they can use frequently, that's a value. Yeah. It's currently way out of alignment. So this is where some of our time and resource and energy needs to go back into, into keeping this the main thing. Now, that's not just producing content for the sake of producing content. It's also keeping their face and their marketing footprint mm. in front of you know, their, their broadest audience. It's helping continue to build their SEO footprint. It's mm. helping to feed people into their, their um, nurturing funnels. You know, all of those mm. things that, that we've got set up in the background. And it creates the ability for them to maintain that value, but getting their activity right to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, because if we're talking in, you know, if we, if we dive into the depths of digital marketing, which is, I mean, really just old school marketing with more pixels. Yeah, um, yeah it is. Yeah. You know, it's still the funnel, right? Yeah. So, so, so it's, that, it's that essential piece of you can be as automated and as technically savvy as you like at the bottom of the funnel. You can have, you know, you can have fantastic messaging, you can have brilliant upsells, you can be doing great ladders of ascension and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, if you're you not working, coming in, if you don't have people coming in, <laughs> if you don't have people coming in, yeah. and if you don't have people who are in the middle of that of that process, which is, yeah. you know, that's both cold traffic and warm traffic. Yeah, and all the people traffic. that are kind of, they've got one toe in the water, they might have signed up for something, or they've joined your Facebook page, but they need to be reminded that you're there so that you are the person they come to. Well, and one of the things that, that, that um, we talk about with this particular client all the time is that, you know, what does it, what does it mean for us to be the first person that they call? In fact, you know yeah. what? I use that with every single client that I've ever worked with. I'm like, what is it going to take? What is it going to take yeah. for you to be the first person that any potential client calls because mm -hmm. you've got brand equity, you've got trust, and you've given them enough answers over the years that they are fairly confident you'll be able to help them with this. Yeah. Because I, yeah, and I think I love the word that you use the word trust because that's in my when I do my little presentation thing, the T for and the map it stands for trust. And I talk about how important it is to build the trust so that when people come to you, money isn't a factor, any none of that stuff's a factor because they actually just choose to come and work with you because they trust you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some with products, you know, like, um, you know. I work with quite a lot of independent retailers and often they, you know, they're going, oh, what, what is it that makes us, people choose us? You know, they can get this cheaper at Kmart or wherever, but people come to them because of the trusted person. So mm -hmm. people are prepared to pay more for trust mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because they know that they're going to get the result that they want and they're going to feel safe with it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and trust, trust also bridges um, the pathway to failure, dare I say it right? Yeah, it does. Which is, which is that oftentimes, <laughs> and this, and this is throwing back to that conversation about, um, about agile methodology. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the principles around agile is that you, um, you develop things fast and quickly and then you fix them quickly. Mm. It's a myth. Agile methodology does not mean fail fast. That's iteration, um, which is a different thing. But the idea of failing fast and fixing fast and getting what you can get done out mm -hmm. of the building, um, Trust is a huge part of that. If you're going mm -hmm. to talk about, you know, innovation, if you're going to take, talk about, you know, uh, running experiments, running beta testing in your marketing campaigns, um, if you're going to talk about doing, you know, even focus groups and customer surveys. They it's all going, cost money, right? They all cost money and, and you open yourself up to the possibility of not, of it not producing mm. the results that the client expects or that the client wants. Um, we've, just, we've just run a test that's been a three-month test with the investment of, you know, some $20,000. Um, with a client only to find out that what we that we've only hit success with this different variation of a landing page we've only hit success in one channel and so now we have to ask ourselves the question is it worth it to develop two completely different interfaces and experiences for these different sets of clients and as we start to do the math to figure out the value of each we're like it's probably not that's a that's a three month you could look at that and say that's a three month fail of an experiment but trust well, enables us to yes. say we have learned something valuable about what we don't need to invest in in the future. Yeah, it's kind of like you know spending um, time, like a couple of days, really nailing how whether you can really gonna ever love skiing or not, and then going, no, I don't ever have to do it again. <laughs> Are you speaking from personal experience here? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> 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 I've got very tight Achilles. It's not great for skiing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, you know, like, it is like you've got to give, sometimes you 
the cost of investing in something for the short term to find out whether it's the fit or not mm -hmm. is a better thing to do than yes. to not to, to you know because also otherwise you're just shooting arrows in the darkness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so one of the ways i apply that in my business is that i um because i do a couple of different levels of of transformation strategy one is with individuals and one is with you know organizations so it doesn't matter the size or scale of the organization i always do um a chemistry call first which is basically yeah. um how let's get on the phone sometimes for sometimes upwards of an hour and maybe it's going to be two or three people from your organization mm -hmm. but let's get on let's get on the phone let's let's see what the chemistry is like but how i'm going to see what the chemistry is like is by figuring out how can I help you in this hour? Yeah. You know, what can I do to problem solve or to problem spot or yeah. to suggest methodologies to help figure out how, how we're going to talk and work together? Because it's, that's always going to be worth an hour of my time, even if the client never comes back. 100% because you only want people who are going to listen to you and do it. And we have, we, we do that most of the time, but I know that there have been times in the history of Identify that we didn't do that. And it always comes back to bite us when we haven't really made sure that we're the best fit for them. Yes. Because people need to trust us. If we're experts, they need to follow where we take them. And if we're getting pushback at every step or just total non-compliance mm -hmm. of not answering emails or whatever, it means any, any spend they've spent with us is a waste of money. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of the reasons I started doing Marketers I Love actually was because I'm me, like I'm who I am and I do what I do. If I'm just standing in what I'm doing and my truth and what I do, there is no problem with sharing and spreading the word of all the other marketers that I love and respect because whoever's listening will go, hey, I really like what Tash was saying, but man, Rachel's a pain in the ass or vice versa or I, refer you know, whatever it is, but there's yeah. no harm in that because the more you stand in what you do, the more you attract the right people, but you mm -hmm. may as well help them find the right person if you're not the right person as well. Oh, 100%, 100%. Yeah. Almost, yeah, almost all of my, um, and part of that is helping to know yourself. So one of the things that I do know about myself um, is that uh, <laughs> um, I know my project life cycle. I know, you know, I know. Oh, I. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing that I'm that I that I have learned over the years is that there is no shame in a hit and run. Now that sounds yeah. terrible, right? But there no, is, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. There is absolutely yeah. no shame in saying, you know what? Here's we've developed the strategy. I am not the person to deliver this for you. Like I'm yeah. not the day to day person. A, you're probably not going to want to afford me. Um, but B there are people who are better placed to be able to deliver this on an ongoing basis. Yeah. And that's, I think one of the things that's great about how then we can work together, you know, and having that kind of pool of people where, you know, yeah. what, you know, within your network, who's got what skills, who's got what capacity, who's, you know, who's potentially going to be a good fit. And again, you know, it, the point is to help solve the problem and get the outcome for the client. Right. Yeah, definitely. My one is if they ask me to do admin tasks, I'm pretty much out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, like there's some admin tasks that you obviously have to do in a job, mm -hmm. but like in any project, um, and Rod, my, my husband, so he works with me. He, he does like a lot of stuff. Like he's, he covers me a lot, but when they start asking for specific admin tasks that are out of my normal project thing, I literally would rather, I don't know, um, go to bed and remain catatonic for times to avoid it. Like as my, I think I need to break this relationship up now. It's not going to work anymore. It's just my, it's my thing. Like I know there's a cycle and then there's that thing of when they try and go too granular and stuff that isn't in my sweet spot, I immediately go, I can't do it. It's not, I need to stay in my lane. I need to stay with what I'm good at. There are other people I can find for you. Let me find you a VA. Yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. Doing that at the moment. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, no. So, so tell people how they would get in touch with you, Tash, if you're going to do some work with them. And who would you work with? Like, what are your values? You talk about generosity. What are the values that would make someone want to work with you? Uh, so anybody who wants to, um, anybody who views themselves as either needing or wanting to invest in and learn more, grow more in the space of collaboration, almost yeah. all of the work that I do involves collaborative um, human-centered design methodology. So that means um, I'm not coming in to give you the answers. I'm coming in to help you and your team 
discover the answers and you're a business counselor <laughs> maybe maybe that's what it is maybe that's what it is there are occasionally tears but that's fine <laughs> Um, the uh, so so that's that that's that's kind of that's one of the key things. Um, I like to have fun. I enjoy being flexible. Um, I'm anybody who thinks that there's uh, anybody who's feeling uh, that they that they need or want some sort of change in their business. They're yeah. like, I just something needs to change, and they're looking around to figure out what needs to change externally. They are the ideal person to come in and Perfect. actually just get a health check on what's going on in terms of your business values and alignment, what's in and out of alignment. Oftentimes there is going to be something externally that needs to change, mm -hmm. but let's actually nail down on exactly what it is so that when you invest time and energy, it's going to be the right thing. And you, one of your strengths, I think, is that you've had that, you've got a business, a business context, you've got a marketing context, you've got a faith-based context, so you can talk about values in terms of that. So you, when you're looking at, you're looking at the person, the business, but you're also looking at, it's not just the internal, which a lot of people in your space do. Right. You are able to look externally and go, how do we bring these messages to market as well, which is, mm -hmm. is an unusual strength to have and an asset. Well, that's why it's values-based outcomes, right? Yeah. The, the end point is where are we going with this? Because, yeah. um, and, and that's actually one of the, that's one of the principles of, of my coaching technique um, and, and that coaching strategy is simply that, um, in order to achieve transformation, you need both insight and action. Mm. And there are too many people who end up, and this is not this is not a criticism of therapy because therapy is awesome. Yeah. Um, but therapy is based on insight, right? Therapy yes. is about helping people achieve insight. And coaching is most of the time about helping people achieve action. Strategy coaching, transformation coaching is saying, right, now that you've had this insight, how are we going to bring this into a practice, a mind practice, a body practice, a spirit practice, you know, a practice that's in your business to help actually bring this insight. So oftentimes that ends up looking like a restructure and a restructure always looks like getting people in the right place and the right fit, but also giving them habits and processes and practices to help mm -hmm. embed that new, that new structure into the healthy culture of your organization. So that's how we're constantly taking things from insight to action. The other thing we do is take, is take action into insight. Something's working really well in your business. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you've got a rush of clients coming from one particular category, one particular mm. sector. Okay, let's talk about why. Let's find the insight, and from that insight, let's actually drive further action steps. So that's that's, that's awesome. what we're doing. And you work in New Zealand and in the states a lot too. I work in the in New Zealand, the states. Um, uh, I've done a bit of work in Australia. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much I work wherever. You go where the where the job is. Uh, I go where the job is. I actually, I like to, um, I just don't like to think about borders being limits um, in the world that we live in. So, you know, if people are up for, if people are up for that journey and looking for it, then I'm like, okay, we'll figure it out. And the virtual world is a great world. Yeah, it is. That's a good world. Um, and how do people find you? Uh, the transformationist.org is a great place to, uh, to start. You can get a rundown on uh, me, you can find my podcast, um, sign up for newsletters, you know, all that, all that awesome. jazz. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for coming along. And um, I've really enjoyed it. It's been awesome. Oh, I've loved it. Thanks so much for having me, Rachel. It's awesome.